So, uh, this is about why I think it's time for audio engineers and web developers to start collaborating more because I think there's been some really interesting developments in web audio. And I think it's time for some really interesting things to happen. They are happening, but some people might not realize that there's a good opportunity here for them to take part and make a name for themselves with it. So, let's have a look at some of that. First of all, I'm a journalist. I write for some of these sites uh, about music and technology. And in the past, I was a recording engineer. I trained to be a recording engineer because like many people at a music college like this, I thought a music degree would lead to work. Um, let's talk about HTML audio, uh, what it is and why it matters. Um, <clears throat> developers here, there's already a lot of developers here who know exactly what this is. Um, <clears throat> engineers might not know because I think as a music college, there'll be a few people here with audio skills who might not realize that they could contribute to this. Um, it's basically a way to deliver audio in a browser. And browsers are in everything from phones to laptops. They'll be in fridges in a few years. And that's not even a joke. They, they probably will be in all sorts of devices around the house. And we need to deliver audio to those browsers to make them more immersive experiences. Uh, that could be anything from games, obviously, uh, because you need you know, coins to ping when you collect them. It could be in apps, when you, as, just as feedback for when you're pressing buttons. Um, now, up to now, a lot of audio is done with Flash. <clears throat> um, as we all know, Flash is not being used in mobile devices or le less and less on desktop. Uh, HTML is taking over a lot of those roles. Um, um, and HTML audio is now supported in most of the main browsers. So not only does it help you deliver that audio in the browser, it actually offers a suite of audio processes. So uh, music producers might not realize that actually under the hood of these browsers now are some really, some really good processes. You've got compressors, gain control, filters for shaping and sculpting that sound, uh, convolution, distortion, uh, lots of things that you might not realize because you don't see the controls, you don't see the dials for them on the website. Uh, and you never will unless the developer actually puts the controls on the page. But actually there's a lot of interesting things happening under there. And actually there's a lot of things that engineers could do to help the internet sound better. Because they're, they're the ones with experience in using these uh, kind of processes in, for example, a studio. So <clears throat> let's look at some examples. Let's check out sound, okay. So I'm going to talk about a guy called Stuart Memo first. Um, he is a superstar in HTML audio. Uh, he did a conference talk last year called JavaScript is the new punk rock. Um, and I agree, because we hear a lot about rock star developers. Well, uh, le let's look at something he's done, which takes that quite literally. But what we can do is we actually take that, connect it, and actually change the waveforms that are going in. Okay? So we can do... So if it's not clear, what he's doing is taking a signal from a guitar, processing it in the browser. Now, first thing you'll notice is that uh, distortion in web audio sounds awful. Uh, the second thing you'll notice is that it's just a proof of concept. But the really important thing to note here is that he's taking the signal from a guitar and a browser, which, let's remember, was originally just something to display text. Uh, text you know, on pages that would be hyperlinked together, and yes, the internet was fascinating then, but now that same browser is processing waveforms, and that's actually a really important point. This is, you know, it's almost as if the browser's developing games console-worthy, you know, qualities. It is just a proof of concept. I'm sure <clears throat> Stuart can make an app that sounds much better, but it is a really powerful thing that's happening there. <clears throat> Let's look at something else Stuart's made. Uh, which is a drum sequencer. 
Uh, similarly, this is completely in the browser. Um, now, other drum sequences have been made um, online, plenty of them. Quite a lot of them will use samples, uh, triggering kick sounds, snare sounds. This one is literally generating the sounds in the, in the browser as well. So he's using oscillators uh, to literally create the sound. So it doesn't exist. It's not, there's no sample. There's no waveform being played back. It's literally being made as the playhead moves past the, the beat buttons. Uh, now that's important because Stuart is an example of someone who has both developer skills and uh, production skills or experience understanding what it takes to put together sounds that uh, an engineer might have. Um, that means that he, he does know how to put together two different sine waves or several different sine waves that create what we would hear as a kick or a snare. And that means that he's been able to separate himself and stand out as a, a figurehead of HTML audio. And the point is that the, this scene is really ripe for people to come in and take part and make a name for themselves. Here's a, an example from the other end of the spectrum. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you have seen this. Uh, this is uh, Alan Parch. Well, let's just watch it. So it's basically Alan Partridge dancing to, uh, to Daft Punk. Doesn't fancy loading, so HML order can't be that great. Uh, I just. Um, <clears throat> uh, basically, it's got Alan Partridge dancing to uh, Daft Punk. And that, that needed HML audio to deliver that audio. If it didn't have the sound and the music, it wouldn't be half as funny. In fact, it would just be quite tragic of a guy just dancing by himself. Uh, even so, even if it is as simple as the browser playing back at a loop, that does make it enough of an experience for people to enjoy, find amusing, and share. And that's testament to audio being a powerful, immersive thing. Even if it's something very straightforward, that is something that adds to the experience significantly. And the fact that HTML or browsers couldn't really do that thing in the past without workarounds, perhaps, then I think it's interesting because now we're in an era where we can make the web more immersive, more interesting uh, and enjoyable. Uh, this is a funny example, but obviously music has the power to move people in all kinds of emotional ways. Um, we've all had emotional experiences with music and it's really time to translate that to the rest of the internet. And it's up to you and your creativity uh, and the people you know and meet to see, see where you could take that. So how can we make the web a more immersive experience? We said about audio being an immersive art form. <clears throat> the last example with Alan Partridge is really a passive web experience. It's not like the um, Tools by Stuart Memo where you're actually generating music, taking part in it. That's great as well, but, but People do like passive experiences that, you know, we sit down and put on a DVD or whatever. We sit there and just sit still and watch it. We might read a newspaper, essentially just sitting down. Passive experiences on the web, I think, benefit a lot from having audio. Um, here's an example I love, <clears throat> which is in a similar vein. Um, this is by a guy called Rob Hampson. He's um, part of a company called We Make Awesome. And... Uh, <clears throat> And uh, they make lots of really interesting stuff. But Rob, um, I love this example because uh, this is something he's just done by himself in his own spare time, as far as I know. And um, I like it because audio is completely center stage. Now, I'm going to have to turn it down. And I can't play it for long. I'll explain why in a moment. But I'll just show you what it does. May have trouble with, with the loading, perhaps. Might be the free Wi Fi is a bit slow with loading audio. So, so, um, 
what I like about that, as I say, is it's complete, completely just about the audio. There's nothing else to do there than experience it. And it, it, it just washes over you. There's nothing else to do. It completely breathes by itself. Um, there's several points to take from that. Now, Rob isn't actually a developer, and he isn't a producer. He is actually a designer. So the first thing is that it shows that web audio is fairly accessible. Here's a guy who's just sat down, had a look at some tutorials, and he's put together something that generates sound and looks quite interesting. He's very original. The other thing to take away is what would happen if he was a producer or if a producer had input into that? Would it be something that you could sit and experience and enjoy for a full five minutes or ten minutes? What if you were to make a web experience that was completely passive, but you could sit there for 30 or 40 minutes and it was actually really enjoyable and you, you would share and you know, talk about it? And I mean, we're getting into album territory there. And then, in fact, we start getting into territory that explores what the concept of an album is and what it can be in the next few years. So really, one of the big points of this talk is that this is where the puck is going. And you've got an opportunity to skate towards it before everyone else does. So let's talk a little bit about support for HTML audio. <clears throat> it's in um, Chrome, Safari, and iOS Safari. I think um, there may be certain issues um, on those browsers, but I think in general it's completely supported in those and it's coming to um, Firefox and Opera soon. I think Firefox is very close to coming out. I think it's in the beaters now. Um, <clears throat> um, it doesn't matter actually that it's not supported in everything. It's actually a good thing um, because let's go turn this off, excuse me. It's actually a good thing because it means you've got time to go and test and explore these ideas because you can do it in you know, Chrome and Safari. Um, but you can be ready with your ideas that are you know, maybe better developed and maybe mature by the time it is a widespread thing and that everyone has and maybe starts taking for granted. So it's time to collaborate, really. <clears throat> Developers and engineers have, have different strengths. Developers have the power to deliver these experiences through browsers, they are like Neo. They see the internet in green code. I swear they look at a browser and they, they, they just know what's under the hood. Engineers know how to produce high caliber audio in a way that developers might not because they have experience working in studios in sensitive scientific environments, which are studios really. And they develop a sense of taste that other other people in other disciplines might not necessarily have. What I'm saying is that they really need to start hooking up. Um, I think one thing that producers and engineers really lack as well is awareness of the whole web scene because a lot of developers will love music and you know it doesn't matter what, where you're from, everyone loves music. If you f find someone who doesn't love music, you probably find it hard to, to talk to them. Um, but engineers and producers really lack awareness of the web scene and all these things that are happening. I was at uh, an engineering meet up in London not long ago. I spoke to a producer who's uh, very well regarded, very intelligent person. Uh, I asked what they thought of the latest HTML stuff, and they said, I don't know who are they signed to. And I thought that was a bit, you know, telling of um, their awareness, um, which is a shame because someone of that caliber would have a lot to offer. Um, audio on the web, they could start to imagine what, what they could do with it. So the solution is to start talking to each of these groups, you even, maybe going to find someone from the other discipline. Um, start talking about your ideas, start producing them. You know, the internet makes it very, very easy to collaborate, certainly easier than it would have ever been in the past. And obviously the internet makes it easy to deliver that, not only, uh, you know, as you might deliver music in the past to people in front of you, or via some medium like a CD, but in fact, to people all around the world. And th there's never been a, a better platform to deliver things, to deliver audio. Uh, and we're about to see an explosion of this sort of thing because week by week, um, developers are having better ideas. They're making lots of new things. And uh, it's, it's worth getting in on this before all the good ideas happen. Imagine. Um, seeing the, the iPhone app store first come out and 
knowing it was going to be absolutely massive. Think of the number of things that you could have done if you had the skill set. Well, right now, engineers, for the first time, have a skill set that can really take off on the internet because the internet has really been a very quiet place, relatively quiet place for a long time. It's about to change, and you could actually take part in redefining that. Places to find uh, engineers or developers, if you're from one or the other, places like Music Tech Meet. Um, I run a Sonic Meet, which is mostly engineers. It would be great to have more developers there. Uh, of course, you could search places like Twitter and forums. Uh, I recommend also getting a designer too. I've not really talked about designers, but uh, really the holy trinity would be designers, developers, and engineers, because uh, it, you could make some aw awesome sounding uh, site or app or experience. But if it doesn't look good, you would find it hard to get coverage. Uh, things that could happen, just to throw some ideas out there. Audio is art, we've explored that a bit. I think there could be very, very interesting long experiences, I'm talking at least five minutes, maybe starting small, but maybe proper long web experiences that are enjoyable to, to sit through. Um, it's about time they happened. Um, another thing that's happening is uh, you can pull in audio from a mic input using something called WebRTC, it's web real-time communications. So it could pull in, in uh, from a mic um, on the laptop or perhaps on the phone. Not sure exactly how, the, how, how that's implemented, but um, if you remember an app called RJDJ uh, on iPhone, it was, uh, you'd basically have headphones on and using the mic on the headphones, um, <clears throat> uh, you'd walk around town or whatever uh, and it would take the sounds from around you like footsteps or cars and it would process them using delays and it would make it all sound very weird, very interesting. And uh, it was ahead of its time, really. I, I'm not sure how much it took off, but it's really genius, and I think that's the best example I can think of in the last five years. M maybe longer than that, I've only really been watching the internet for five years. Um, RGDJ was the perfect kind of collaboration between uh, engineers and developers, other than in video games, where it's obviously been part of the culture for a long, long time. Also, um, something browsers can also do is spectral analysis. Uh, I didn't include a link to spectral analysis, which would give you a better idea if you don't know what it is, but you can basically see audio. Uh, in the little image there, you can see uh, at the bottom, if you imagine the bass is down there, treble is up there. Um, you can visualize sounds. Now, the browser can also visualize these sounds. I'm thinking there's lots of room for experimentation there, perhaps just for playing back audio. People can, for example, learn from it learn how to mix sound because they can see where the frequencies are placed. Or perhaps you could completely turn it around and actually draw pictures using sound. So the point isn't to hear the audio that's made, the point is to see what it produces. There's other things coming to HTML audio soon. Surround sound is being produced so you could picture HTML web apps uh, being in the living room and actually being useful on the surround sound. Uh, MIDI is, uh, there are ways to do MIDI in the browser. If you know what, don't know what MIDI is, keyboards and those drum pads that connect to computers will generally be controlled by MIDI. And you can hook the, those controllers up to browsers. Official HTML support for it is coming. Uh, there are ways around it now that aren't necessarily hard. A uh, couple of ideas there would be controlling, uh, you, could, well, you could release an instrument that runs in the browser that people can use their music hardware like keyboards with. Or you could, again, turn it round and use uh, people, women are like that around me, I'm sorry. Um, you could um, use MIDI controllers to warp other things on the page. You could use it to maybe do visual effects uh, on, on a website. So uh, I hope that's given some insight into what could be possible um, and uh, hopefully motivated a couple of people to explore this a little bit further. I'd love to see what you come up with if you do come up with anything. Um, there's my email. I'm also on Twitter at Tom Davenport. And I'll be sharing the slide, the, a link to these slides after on my Twitter if you want to pass that on. So thank you very much.